and like I said, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat this, and I'm not going to say that every single time the Bible talks about a servant, it's just a hired servant, because it's not true. There's bond servants. There's two different types of servants. I'm not going to make it sound like people, that there's not laws regarding people being the property of someone else, because there are. The Bible does talk about that. But again, if you think about in your mind of just what comes up when you think of slavery, it's not exactly the same as what the Bible is describing here. And let's look at some more verses. There's a lot of verses about this subject. Leviticus 25, look at verse number 39. The Bible says, And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondservant. So here is a situation where someone is going to be a bond servant because they're poor, they don't have any money, and they need, you know, they're just going to end up selling themselves to work for somebody. And he says, don't compel them to serve as a bond servant, but as a hired servant. This is how you ought to, if you're going to go and, uh, and buy someone, you should treat them as a hired servant and not as a bond servant. That is what you should do. He says, but as a hired servant and a, as a sojourner, a sojourner is someone who's temporarily staying in the land, right? And he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. And the year of Jubilee, again, they get, they get released, right? Verse 41, and then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his father shall he return. For they are my servants. So he's saying, look, these other people, these other brethren, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ, other people that are, that, you know, your neighbor as well and by you, he says, they're my servants. They're God's servants. So you treat God's servants as a hired servant, even if they're in the situation of being, you know, because they're poor and they need, you know, they need, they have no other place to turn to but to, but to sell themselves into servitude. He's saying, you treat them as my servants. They are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Verse 43, thou shalt not, look at this, thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shalt fear thy God. So what is God, is he, is he saying, well, you just need to whoop them and beat them and, you know, treat them? No. You don't rule over him with rigor. You treat him as a servant of God. Verse 44, Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall you buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall you buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession." And yes, the Bible says that about these heathen. And you think about the heathen, they were supposed to have been wiped out. And the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Prizites, and the, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, they were supposed to have been killed and completely wiped out, and they weren't. And because they weren't wiped out, you know, they ended up becoming these bondmaids and, and bondservants as a result of not losing their lives, which, which was supposed to have happened to begin with. But that's, that's kind of a, another thing here. Uh, verse 47, or excuse me, verse number 46, And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you do inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever, but over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with Rigor. So there is definitely a distinction here being brought between the heathen and the children of God. There's no denying that. There absolutely is. Verse 47, And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family, after that he is sold, he may be redeemed again, one of his brethren may redeem him. So here's another opportunity for people to be redeemed from their bond service, right? So if someone is, you know, they're poor, they have no, re you know, no resources, and they're going to sell themselves in bond service, someone else, someone of their family, someone of their close kin, or even themselves, if they're able to later, then be able to redeem themselves 
they're not locked in. They could just pay back and go, okay, here you go. Now, now I'm quit. Now I'm free to be able to, uh, to be free from that bondage. 